So you're taking 3,000 square feet of uh, horizontal space and you're turning that into 5,000 square feet. The connectivity of permaculture that gives you that matrix, that life web of design. We waste as Americans 96 billion pounds of food per year. Now billion? Some billion with a B. <laughs> And with that, we're back again. We're talking about innovations. It's Radio Free Canada. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. And I'm Monica Salmark. We are the spiritual warriors here backing you up as you create signs, get out in the streets, and talk about what's important in the world. We are here to dissuade you from talking to about lame stream media and the way they cover things up because we're talking about solutions. It's all about food. Welcome to the show. Check it out. Maybe our window for changing things like global warming is short, but looking at a model like this, it's inspiring because we're working to help humanity here, but we're also working here to help the planet. And that's, that's something that's kind of oftentimes put as a duality, but here we can do both. I made, I made a really strong commitment that anybody who walks through that door, I would take them on a tour of our facility. Come on in, you guys. So, uh, the key to this uh, type of uh, production that we're doing is to use every bit of space you have. This is high-valued space. One, two, three, four, sometimes seven levels we have in some of the greenhouses. So you're taking 3,000 square feet of uh, horizontal space and you're turning that into 5,000 square feet. So this is farming, uh, we believe, of the future. You can take a look at a, at a variety of the different things we're doing here um, that are unique from other farming models. And one of that is the fact we're growing in the city. You get the diversity of uh, being in the city and having a piece of the country all mixed into one. We have everything set up east to west, south to north. We're using the sunlight. We're using our natural environment to house this place. Um, we're empowering people rather than equipment. We have to look at agriculture in a different kind of way. Uh, it has to be very integrated ag system that you create. It has to uh, have renewable energy. So this is the reality of what urban agriculture really should look like. It impacts everybody and shows people that you can do something just with three acres. You can make an impact. Just you gotta get your hands there. You gotta get into it and actually do it. So this is what we want people to do. Come here, get inspired and say, I can do that. Leave here and say, I can do that. That is Will Allen from Milwaukee. Aquaponics That's is awesome. what he's doing. But just a whole integrated system he's doing. Now they're using renewable energy to run it. And they heat it without oil. What a thought. Okay, they take biomass, they turn it into fuel. We could do it. Here in Kelowna, you can do it in any municipality if you take your biomass or your sewage and bleed off the energy. Of course, that's an untouchable thing. Plus, you get food that has no additives, no antibiotics, no hormones, that's healthier for you, no pesticides. And you're investing in people instead of machines. We've got it. It's innovations about food. Let's run one more. Let's do it. Eighty-eight years old and a great-grandfather several times over, John Walker retired decades ago. But several times a week, you'll find him hard at work. The ladies box the bread. I take the boxes and stack them on a pallet. It is food destined for hungry families, food that would otherwise go to waste. I figure that and that's good for me at my age. Uh, I need to keep busy, you know. Shirley Elwell is 72, and the aches and pains of age make it hard for her to walk sometimes, but she's hell on wheels when she drives her forklift. Shirley and John are two of the more than 500 senior citizens who volunteer at Senior Gleaners in Sacramento, California. Founded 30 years ago, the organization collects unused vegetables from farms, groceries that are nearing their expiration date, 
and day-old bread from local bakeries. The food is packed up and distributed to feed the hungry. Even suburban gardens can provide a bounty. This crew, led by a 78-year-old called Big George, is harvesting citrus fruit from Margaret Miranda's backyard. 49 million Americans are food insecure, meaning they may not know where their next meal will come from. But Senior Gleaners President Gary McDonald says there's plenty of food to go around. It's getting it from, the, from where it is to the people that need it. It's really a shame that we waste as much food as we do. We waste, as Americans, 96 billion pounds of food per year. Now, billion? Some billion, with a B. Many of the volunteers themselves are low income and need help putting food on their own tables. Shirley Elwell says knowing she's helping the hungry gives her a right sense now. of purpose. We have snow on the rooftop, but we got a brain and we use it. And they're making the world a better place, one box of food at a time. Every little bit helps. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, Sacramento, California. Most impressive. Most impressive. That's a staggering amount of wastage. 96 billion pounds of food wasted and we have uh, people starving to death in the United States. Mm -hmm. But it's illegal to you know, serve your leftovers, even in Kelowna. 46 million people are food insecure. Yeah, one to two million people are food insecure in Canada. And how much do restaurants throw out? How much do grocery stores throw out? And they're not allowed to feed the homeless or poor people with that food. They're not allowed. That's how fascist and sick our society is. Well, don't you know there's health issues? Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, you might, and uh, you know, disrupt banking profits. <laughs> food insecure. Food insecure. I hadn't even heard that phrase. Yeah. Before. The UN came in. They sent an investigator over to take a look at uh, poor people. One out of five children are food insecure in Canada. Okay, that means they're hungry. You yeah. have to choose between food and rent. Okay, that's how fascist and sick it is in Canada, especially Kelowna where there's actual laws against collecting your leftovers from buffets and wait, restaurants. Wait, 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 wait. But don't you know that our economy is growing in Canada? Yeah, that's right. And they're it creating... It did just turn around. But there you go. Uh, Will Allen is on there. He creates a million pounds of food in five acres. We have aquaponics. And then we have gleaners, seniors gleaners, yeah. who are seriously making mm -hmm. an impact. This is seniors doing something other than complaining. Well, yeah, or standing at Walmart saying hello. Yeah. It's but great to see them We have there. to start looking at things in a more holistic manner, though. Yeah. Not just supporting a grocery store. No. Okay. Right. Or the trucking company that has grown up around it. We mm -hmm. don't need these franchise food systems. Uh, let's run this. We're going to take you into the small space, the micro space. The high density of humanity, the city, the town, the urban settlement, we're going to get into those small garden spaces. We're going to show you how you can link all the different elements together. The connectivity of permaculture that gives you that matrix, that life web of design. How do ducks and their nutrient flow from their pond flow down with gravity applied as design in a garden? How does your water tank overflow to set up an irrigation system? How do your worm farms work? How do your raised beds work in relation to a wicking bed? All these different elements working on the thermal mass of your house or the streetscape. Everything you need to know that can make your life an easier energy audit and a more positive and beautiful footprint. Remove the guilt, get into the design, get that fresh food, that food that's absolutely fresh in time, short in distance, and beneficial as a therapy. These design elements are easy. We're gonna take you there, we're gonna apply it, and we're gonna explain it to you so you can do it for yourself. Welcome to urban permaculture, the most intense permaculture there is on this planet. The center of the city, the urban landscape.
so doesn't that give you hope? That brilliant. does. Simply brilliant. Doesn't it? You know, I've got, that's why I say, you know, I have no problem bringing kids into the world today because we have guys like him who are, who are making solutions work. Uh, you know, sure, we got to defeat Harper and the fascists in the world. But we've got to focus on these guys who are really bringing us the solutions. Well, we could just ignore them, too, you know. What, Harper? Well, we can't really. <laughs> I don't know. If someone breaks it in the elevator, you know everybody who did it. Yeah. Say, tell them to grow up. But it is about a shift of attention and yes. focus. Yes. And having these solutions definitely gives me more inspiration to keep putting up the fight and yeah. doing it in a different way. Yeah. Okay, use your brain. Work smart, not hard. And if you're part of the agents of change like we are, make sure that you stick to what works like these guys and what doesn't work like oil industry. I think we need to get a copy of Urban Permaculture and lock city council in a room and force them to watch it. <laughs> okay. I Actually, I, I kind of like locking them in the room part. Yeah. Okay. We'll draw uh, them in with a panda. <laughs> yeah, hey, right. Then they'll be panda. distracted. <laughs> We have a panda in this room, and then make them hunt. Let's <laughs> don't talk about the panda this. in the room. Let's run this. The garden is really something that uh, is conspicuously absent in American life. Although it was perfectly normal and natural, you know, two, three generations ago. I know from watching community gardens when people grow food and have control over that, it's just amazing. No one suggests that um, by growing your own food, people are going to become rich and get their way out of poverty. That's ridiculous. What is important is that, that as a way of being able to survive poverty, growing food in gardens is vital. One of the, these plaques we're going to dedicate to buying plants uh, from with your benefits so that we can spread awareness. When you're dealing with food stamps, you're dealing with a limited amount of money that you have to spend on food. If you spend three dollars on a tomato plant, put it in the ground and it produces a, a dozen tomatoes right there, you, it's an enormous return on investment. You feel empowered that you can grow your own food. So a lot of refugees and immigrants are um, taking back what they already know and they're teaching their children and it's a way to connect um, generations. So there might be more challenges to growing food in an urban, cramped environment, but it's definitely possible and it's also really fun. And you see it's happening everywhere. We saw that in Chicago, they opened up the largest vertical farm in the world. Yeah, and now they're saying you can use your food stamps to buy food producing plants and seeds. Which just makes sense. Just a little bit. Okay, Fantastic. grow food, not lawns. That's a, one of the major campaigns that's out there. We're working on municipal sustainability and aquaponics. And then we want you to get into Green Gold. Yeah, that's an amazing movie. And absolutely, if you think that the problems are too big to solve, the size of British Columbia was rehabilitated by the people of China. Walk, you know, check it out. Oh, that's Green an, gold. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. really cool. It's, I also wanted to mention that you were talking about the bonding between generations of passing down knowledge of planting and farming. Mm -hmm. What a great idea. Yes. Uh, you know, getting that multi generational thing going so that wisdom is passed down and passed up. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's a two way street now. Gotcha. Okay, young people are exposed to more information than older people, and but older people have the experience. Yeah, and also these kind of things like urban gardens can really f cause a sense of community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people start talking to each other instead of staring at their iPhones all the time. <gasps> Unity? Hey, wait a second. You're doing that thing again. Unity? We're oh. talking about hope and solutions. Come on. It's about, you know, profit. Profit and the next iPhone. And, oh, look, a panda. Yeah. Wait, wait. Oh, there it is. Right. <laughs> it's my panda. like that. My panda. How to get a politician to watch this. You know, we have a panda in the other room. <laughs> it might be that. a pipeline to it. That just kills me. We are talking about solutions, but we do want you to get informed. Remember, good sides and bad sides. Humans are both sides, and we know how to work it. That's why we've got us. It's Radio Free Canada. <laughs> Arc, baby. We're setting ourselves up for an election here soon. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. And I'm Monica Solmark. Thanks for joining us. It's so cool having you as part of the winning team. Stay tuned. We got more stuff coming up. It's so cool. We're back just a bit. <laughs>